Now that users can log into our application, let's fetch data for the authenticated user. So if we want to fetch data for this authenticated user, we're going to need an API that will actually verify the authenticated user and then return data back to the client. So there's really going to be two parts here. First, we're going to have to create that API that will verify the user and provide data. And then we're going to have to make a request from our WPF application to that API in order to get the data. So in this first part, let's focus on creating that API. So of course, we're in the .NET sphere right now. So this is going to be an ASP.NET Web API. So on our solution, let's add a new project and let's select ASP.NET Core Web API. So let's move on with that. We're going to call this secret message dot API. We're going to run this on .NET 6, which is the latest version of .NET at the time. But this should also work on .NET 5 and probably .NET Core 3 as well. Authentication type, we're going to leave this as none for now because we're going to be rolling our own setup via Firebase authentication. We will configure for HTTPS. We're not going to enable Docker, maybe in the future we will. Let's actually not use controllers. I'm kind of interested in using minimal APIs. Haven't done much with that yet. So uncheck that. And then for now, we're just not going to get into open API support. So we'll uncheck this as well. But here we go. Let's create our API. And let's just make sure this API works before we get into changing anything. So let's set this as the startup project and run this. So here we go. Our app did start up successfully. And at the moment, with just this scaffolded out template app, we have this one git endpoint to slash weather forecast. So let's hit this and just test out and make sure that our app is working. So let's head over to Postman and let me make a request. So let me grab our URL for our app and we want to make a request to weather forecast. So here we go. We should get our data back, which we do. So now that we verified this works, let's get rid of all of this scaffolded out weather forecast stuff. We do not need that. So instead of this get endpoint being slash weather forecast, let's just make it slash. And then for now, we'll just return hello world. And then we also don't need this weather forecast record down here. So now we can start building out this API to do what we want. So what we want to do is we want to verify the authenticated Firebase user. And if we successfully verify the user, we'll actually return data. If not, we'll return a 401 for unauthorized. So if we want to verify authenticated Firebase users, then we're going to have to connect to our Firebase app. So to do that, we can install the official Firebase admin NuGet package. So let's search for Firebase admin. And here we go, Firebase admin, the official SDK made by Google. Let's install that. And then we can also install Firebase admin authentication dot dependency injection. So this is a package made by me, Singleton Sean, and I have a video where I actually build out and go through the contents of this package. But basically what this package does is it exposes extension methods that allows our application to easily set up Firebase authentication and authenticate incoming requests. So we'll see that in action shortly, but let's install this. And now back to step one, we're gonna have to connect to Firebase. So to do that, we can use the Firebase admin SDK that we just installed and we can call Firebase app. So import that from Firebase admin dot create. And calling this with no parameters will create a Firebase app via Google application default credentials. And these Google application default credentials rely on environment variables. And I've used this approach in the past on my channel, but it's kind of painful using this approach for local development and deploying to the cloud. So instead we can initialize our app with different credentials by creating these app options here. And on these app options, we can specify our credential. And with this, we can create our Google credential. So let's import that. And specifically, I wanna create our credential from JSON. And all we have to do here is pass in a JSON string that'll represent the credential to connect to our Firebase project. So the nice thing about this approach is that this JSON string could really come from anywhere. It could be an environment variable. It could be from our app settings.json. It could come from Azure Key Vault or for local development, we can store it in user secrets. So I really like the flexibility of this approach 
But regardless of where we store this JSON, it should get loaded into our app configuration. So let's get the JSON from our app configuration. So we have that on our builder. We can dig into configuration and let's get a value. This is going to be a string for our JSON. And the special key for this, we can just call it Firebase config. So for local development, this Firebase config is going to be loaded from user secrets. And the nice thing about user secrets is that we don't have to worry about explicitly ignoring something from source control via our git ignore. So on our project, we can manage user secrets and we wanna have a secret for our Firebase config and we wanna set this to our Firebase config JSON. So to get that, let's move over to the Firebase console for our app and let's click on this gear and go to project settings. Then let's go to service accounts and we wanna generate a new private key. So let's generate that and download that. And now we have this JSON file downloaded over here that represents our private key and is essentially what we're calling our Firebase config. So with this JSON private key that we just downloaded, I have this open right now. And as you can see, this is a JSON object, but in our secrets.json, we're gonna have to set this Firebase config as a stringified one line JSON string. So let's use this JSON the string tool to convert our Firebase config JSON into a one line string and i'll leave a link to this tool in the description but let's copy our firebase config json and paste that in here and convert this so here we go we got this one line string let's copy all of this so here we go should be able to paste seamlessly here Control v and there we go that looks good no syntax errors on our json and we should be good to load this in our program.cs. So let's put this initialized Firebase app into just some temporary variable here. Let's we'll call it FB app. And let's put a breakpoint here and just make sure that this initializes. So here we go, no errors. And let's look at our Firebase app. And here we go, looking deep into the credential. Looks like it picked up our project ID from that Firebase config JSON. So now that we've connected to our Firebase app, let's actually register this Firebase app in dependency injection. So we can take our builder services and we wanna add this as a singleton because we only want one instance of our initialized Firebase app. And now that we've registered our Firebase app, we can use that helper package that we installed earlier that I created to set up Firebase authentication. So let's take our builder services and we just want to add Firebase authentication. So here we go, let's import that from Firebase admin authentication dot dependency injection dot extensions. And again, if you don't want to use this package and you want to set up Firebase authentication on your own, then be sure to check out the video, which I'll link in the description, where I create and go through the contents of this package. But moving on, now that we have Firebase Authentication Services registered. Let's actually use authentication middleware. So before we hit our endpoints, we want to authenticate the user. So let's use authentication. And then after we've tried verifying the Firebase user in this use authentication middleware, then we wanna see if the user is authorized to perform whatever they're trying to do. So after that, we want to use authorization. So now that we're using this authentication middleware here, that's going to use our Firebase authentication services to try and verify and authenticate the Firebase user making the request. And if it successfully authenticates the Firebase user, then it's going to put the Firebase user claims onto the HTTP context.user. So that HTTP context.user is our claims principle. And with minimal APIs, that claims principle is one of the special types that we can just get as a parameter to our endpoint handler. So we can specify our claims principle here, which represents our decoded Firebase user. Let's import claims principle and let's put a breakpoint here. So let's run our app and let's make that request. Whoops, and we're using authorization, but we forgot to add authorization services. So let's do that real quick. Let's take our builder.services and add authorization. There we go, no big deal, let's try this again. There we go, our app starts this time. But now in Postman, let's make a request to our API. So our get endpoint is just that slash, and let's send this up. So right now, our user has no claims on it, 
because we didn't send up a Firebase access token representing the authenticated Firebase user. So now let's grab an access token for an authenticated Firebase user. So we can actually do that in our WPF app. So let's change that to be our startup project. And let's put a breakpoint in the authentication store right on this login method where we get back this Firebase auth link because this Firebase auth link is gonna have our access token, which we'll use to authenticate with our API. So let's start this up and I've created the user previously. Let me use that to log in. So let's submit this and we get back this Firebase auth link. And on here we have this Firebase token. So I'm gonna grab this value and copy that. So here we go, copied. And now let's switch back to running our API. So let me set that as the startup project and run that. Still have our breakpoint on hello world. But now back in the postman, let's add an authorization header and we're gonna pass up that Firebase token here. So let's specify that we're using bearer authentication as our authentication scheme. So we want bearer, and then we just want to paste in our Firebase token. So let's paste that, and let's send out this request. So we hit our breakpoint. Let's look at our user, and this time we have claims on here. So I have my user ID, my email, I'm not verified, and my username is Singleton Sean. So it looks like our authentication middleware has successfully verified and authenticated our Firebase user using our Firebase authentication services. So continuing here, we get our data back. So now the final step is that I only want authenticated users to be able to hit this get endpoint. So to do that, we can have an authorize attribute here. So authorize, and let's import that from Microsoft.ASP.Core.Authorization. And let's run this. Again, this time we are still authenticated because we're passing up our Firebase token. And here we go, we're authenticated, so we can hit this endpoint. So let's continue. We get our data back, but if I don't send up this header, so we're not passing up our Firebase token, then we get a 401 unauthorized because we didn't pass up our Firebase token, so our API couldn't verify and authenticate us. So this is pretty much all the behavior I wanted to implement in this first part. But before summarizing what we did, there's still some things I want to clean up. So for one, I don't want to return just raw string text here. Let's return some JSON instead. So for this, I'm going to create a response type that ASP.NET will serialize into JSON. So let's add a new folder over here for responses. And let's add a class in here. And we'll just call this the secret message response. And on here, we're just going to have a single property, a string for the message. So now let's use this in our endpoint. We're gonna return that secret message as JSON. So we'll use results.json and initialize our secret message response. And our message for now will just be Firebase is cool. And then also in this endpoint, we're not really referencing this authenticated user. So we don't need that parameter anymore. And then finally, I wanna get into this launch settings.json. And for developing an API, I really don't need the browser to launch on startup. So we can get rid of these launch browser and launch URL keys. So let's run this and verify everything is still working as expected. So let's head into Postman. Let's send up without our header. And we get our 401. With our Firebase token, we get our data back with our JSON message this time. So just to summarize what we did, we created this ASP.NET Web API that our WPF client is eventually going to use to get data for the authenticated user. So on this API, we had to verify and authenticate Firebase users. So we had to connect to our Firebase app. And to do that, we downloaded the Google credential for our Firebase app from the Firebase console, converted that into a JSON string, which we can load from our app configuration, which in our case, we stored in user secrets under the key of Firebase config. And then we used a helper package that I had created in another video so that we could add Firebase authentication seamlessly using just this simple extension method. And then we also added authorization. So with authentication and authorization services added, we could use authentication and use authorization middlewares down here 
that leverages those services to perform authentication and authorization. And finally, we could use our auth setup to secure this endpoint for only authenticated users. So next time we'll hit this API from our WPF app, but hopefully you can also use these concepts to apply Firebase authentication to your own ASP.NET API. Until next time, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave those below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.